These are the leaks that have been turned in uh, to National Grid in uh, Newton. And I'm going to go to 25 Melville Ave. So how many of these reports are there now? Uh, around 350. This is the report for 24 and 25 Melville Ave, turned in on May 1st, 2010. And we're back here on the 27th. Uh, all the utility lines have been marked out. The six inch cast iron, right here with the service line going across the street. And there's another service line that goes up to the side of this house. Here, no Verizon, no RCN. Uh, as we can see, all the other electric Everything is overhead. There's no markings for underground electric, electric lines. And uh, we've told the city that we don't need water or sewer marked out because that'll all be uh, at a much uh, deeper level uh, than we're going. We're going about 18 inches deep. These are markings from when you found Correct. the leak. Correct. Gas Safety Inc., GSI, and National Grid also marked out. And this shows the range where you think the leak is? in between these uh, white markings. Uh, the gas company came out uh, at some point and tried to uh, pinpoint the exact location of the leak, drilling uh, holes uh, in a series and taking gas readings in each one to determine where the high point of the leak is. We're not here to pinpoint the leak. We're here to determine if this gas is affecting the tree. So there's a little bit different uh, uh, motive here for uh, gas safety ink being here than National Grid. National Grid's here to determine the extent of, of the leak and determine if it's safe or unsafe to uh, leave the leak. They've decided that it's safe enough to leave the leak. I'm here to document that there is gas near the tree that's damaging the tree. Okay, we're going to mark off 18 inches on the uh, plunger bar. This will get into the healthy root area. Okay. 63-64% gas at the tree. And now we will switch to oxygen. Actually, I can flip that right open like that. We'll change to oxygen. And the oxygen is less than 1%. So it's 0 0.8, 0 0.9 oxygen uh, with about 63, 64% gas, which is a high gas reading. Extremely low oxygen. Right by the tree, we have one oxygen over 64 gas. Now we'll take a reading about three to three feet away from the tree. And this reading should go down. We're getting further away from the gas pipe. And it looks like we have a high read of about 50% gas. And we'll change to oxygen. And we're at the 4.9 level About 4.7 over 50% gas. And then we'll see if this drops down. We'll go another three feet or so further away. We still have gas here, and the readings do drop. We're down to the 20% level in dropping because there's less gas, down to 12. But the high read was about 28. And now we'll change to oxygen and we have 14 oxygen. So as we get further away from the leak, the oxygen levels appear to be going up. Now we'll do a read up by the poles. At this location, we now have about a 2% gas reading and 13% oxygen. Now what we'll do now is we'll take one more reading on the other side of this driveway to get a zero, hopefully. Uh, reading closer to the gas line now. We are at 56% gas. 
So they had about a six, it went down to six at seven. I'll put it back over to gas. It's at about the 57 level. Now it's down to 33. With the electric pump, it changes the readings around. So now we're at 32 gas. 31, let's see what the oxygen is. Nine. So which set of numbers do you use? Well, that's that's the uh, that's a that's the fifty thousand dollar question. These instruments have a pump inside that constantly pulls. I like to use the high reading on the gas and the low reading on the oxygen because uh, that's the amount of gas that was actually in the ground. Where others will use after the machine has sucked the gas out uh, the low reading. Uh, I feel that the high reading gives you the true account of what is actually in the ground and uh, to use to use the low reading uh, which the gas company does uh, doesn't give you the true idea of what's going on below the ground now we'll go below the gas line and we're back up to the 54 percent gas we'll go over to the oxygen 4.2 I would guess these readings should start to drop now we're getting away from the gas line and it looks like 33 may be the high and 7.6. So the number of holes you do would depend on how long it takes you to get a normal reading? I like to get zeros. Let's see if we can get a negative down here. I'm not sure if we can. Good, we have a zero gas. We still have a little bit of low oxygen or the alarm wouldn't go off. Let's see what it is. Well, see it's coming up. We're at 16.9. I'm going to take a reading behind the tree. Uh, to see if there's gas up here, and I'll try to get a zero. And that's very soft. They took out another tree here. It looks like a few years ago, so it's still soft underneath there. 30% gas. And now we'll switch to the oxygen level. And we have four oxygen on the back side of the tree. Down to three. Down to two. We had a 1.4 over 30, so it's, it's really been really been pushed out. Now let's uh, make sure there's no gas up in the yard here. I would like to get a zero. And we have zero, uh, zero gas here, and the oxygen level could be beeping from the previous reading. So it's 18 oxygen, uh, zero gas up in the yard. Uh, I'm just going to put another test ball over here and on both sides to make sure there's no gas migrating up towards this house. And the gas company's already been here and checked this for safety. And zero gas. There. And here. Here. And here we're all about 18 oxygen, zero gas, 18 oxygen, zero gas, 18 oxygen, zero gas. I'll put in a shading area when, I'm, when I've completed this. It goes right around the tree and you can see the tree is uh, more than likely not going to make it. In addition to low oxygen, also pushes out any moisture. And as you can see right here, we, it rained last night, but the ground is like powder. It's very dry and this is common around gas leaks. 